This lesson on the oxidation of food is going to concentrate on oxidation reactions involving various carbon compounds, as well as the reagents required to do these oxidation reactions and the colour changes associated with these reactions. These are the learning outcomes that are going to be covered in this video. Traditionally, oxidation was the name used to describe a reaction with oxygen. So if we have iron rusting and reacting with oxygen, we would say that iron was oxidised. At National 5 level, oxidation uh, was usually used to describe a reaction in which a substance loses electrons. So for instance, when magnesium reacts with oxygen, magnesium atoms lose electrons in an oxidation reaction to form magnesium ions. So here's an equation for the reaction. You'll notice that magnesium atoms are going to magnesium two positive ions. So this is an oxidation reaction. You can see the magnesium atoms are losing two electrons in an oxidation reaction. Those two electrons have to go somewhere and they get gained by the oxygen molecules to form negatively charged oxygen ions in a reduction reaction. When alcohols undergo complete combustion in a good supply of oxygen, they are fully oxidized to carbon dioxide and water as shown in this equation. However, when alcohols undergo milder oxidation reactions with milder oxidizing agents, they are only partially oxidized to new carbon compounds, so which leaves the carbon skeleton intact and only kind of rearranges or affects a few specific bonds. What we're going to look at is how primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols are affected by mild oxidizing agents such as acidified dichromate. Alcohols can be categorised into three groups. So if you take propanol, we would call that a primary alcohol because the carbon that is joined to the hydroxyl group is joined to one other carbon. If we take propan-2-ol, the carbon shown in blue that is joined to the hydroxyl group is joined to two other carbons. In a tertiary alcohol, such as 2-methylpropan-2-ol, the carbon shown in blue joined to the hydroxyl group is joined to three other carbons. So we've got three alcohols shown in this table. We've got propan 1-ol, a primary alcohol, propan 2-ol, a secondary alcohol, and 2-methylpropan-2-ol, a tertiary alcohol. The video shown next will show us how each of the alcohols react with acidified dichromate. This is speeded up footage of an experiment in which I've added propan 1-ol, propan 2-ol, 2-methylpropan-2-ol, and a water control on a dimple tile and I've added orange acidified dichromate to it, which is a mild oxidizing agent. You can see that the primary and the secondary alcohol, propan 1-ol and propan 2-ol, have reacted with the acidified dichromate to give a color change from orange to green-blue, while the tertiary alcohol, 2-methylpropan 2-ol, has not reacted with the acidified dichromate. So we can conclude from the experiment seen that primary alcohols, such as propan 1-ol, can be oxidized by acidified dichromate. Secondary alcohols, such as propan 2-ol, can be oxidized by acidified dichromate. However, tertiary alcohols, such as 2-methylpropan 2-ol, cannot be oxidized by acidified dichromate. So we can conclude that primary and secondary alcohols can be oxidized by acidified dichromate, which turns from orange to green. Tertiary alcohols, however, cannot be oxidized by acidified dichromate. What's happening is the electrons lost by the oxidized alcohols are gained by the orange dichromate ion. When the orange dichromate ion gains electrons in the presence of hydrogen ions, we get the green chromium ion, which gives the green color at the end of the reaction. One thing to note as well, that um, the reason the dichromate is acidified is because of the 14 H plus required in this reaction. This needs to be acidified as there needs to be a source of hydrogen ions in the reaction. 
The oxidation of ethanol, a primary alcohol by acidified dichromate, was the basis of testing suspected drink drivers in the last century. So what happened was the suspect would breathe into a bag and between that was some acidified dichromate. And if there was ethanol in the suspect's breath, the acidified dichromate would change from orange to green to give a positive test. As well as acidified dichromate, black copper 2 oxide can be used to oxidise primary and secondary alcohols, but not tertiary alcohols. So the experiment I'm going to show you next is going to have some ceramic wool soaked with ethanol. And beside it is going to be some black copper 2 oxide, which I'm going to heat with a spirit burner. And you'll see how the products cause a change in universal indicator to suggest a chemical reaction has occurred in the form of an oxidation reaction. In this video, we've got some ethanol and some ceramic wool and some black copper oxide. And this is attached to a tube which will go into some water with green universal indicator, as you can see here. So as I heat the black copper oxide, fumes of ethanol are going to pass over the black copper oxide. And you can see there's a colour change in the copper oxide from black to brown. And what's happening is the copper ions in the black copper oxide are changing to brown copper metal atoms. And one thing to note is universal indicator when we look at it will have a colour change. We're getting some product of this oxidation reaction of the alcohol to something that is slightly acidic, as shown here. As you saw in the video, during the oxidation of ethanol, the black copper 2 oxide formed a brown solid, which was copper metal atoms. The electrons lost by the ethanol in the oxidation reaction were gained by the copper 2 positive ions to form copper metal in a reduction reaction. So the ethanol was oxidized and the copper oxide was reduced. During the oxidation of ethanol by copper 2 oxide, there are two stages of oxidation occurring. In the first stage, ethanol is oxidized to form the aldehyde ethanol. If we take the structural formula for ethanol and the formula for copper oxide, and we do an oxidation reaction, the ethanol will lose two hydrogens and rearrange its bonds to form the aldehyde ethanol. The copper oxide will lose its oxygen to form copper metal atoms and the two hydrogens from the ethanol and the oxygen from the copper oxide will form water. So we can say that when primary alcohols are oxidized they produce aldehydes. Remember in the video that the pH indicator turned from green to red when ethanol was oxidized by copper 2 oxide. The reason for this is that the ethanol formed in the first stage of oxidation is oxidized further to form ethanoic acid, a carboxylic acid. So our ethanol gains an oxygen in an oxidation reaction to form ethanoic acid. So when aldehydes are oxidized, they produce carboxylic acids. So in summary, primary alcohols can be oxidized to form aldehydes, which can then be further oxidized to carboxylic acids. So in the experiment that you saw, the alcohol in this reaction was oxidized to ethanoic acid, which turned the pH indicator red. Bottles of wine, when open, should be drank within a few days, otherwise they will start to have a slightly acidic taste. And the reason for this that if wine is exposed to air for long periods, oxygen in the air will oxidise the ethanol in the wine to ethanol, an aldehyde, which can then be oxidised further to ethanoic acid, which is also vinegar. And this is the basis for forming certain kinds of vinegar, such as white wine vinegar. When secondary alcohols are oxidised, such as propantool, they form ketones. So if we oxidize propantool, 
with say acidified dichromate or copper 2 oxide, we would get propanone being formed, a ketone. The thing to note about propanone or any ketone as well is that further oxidation does not occur. So we say that ketones resist further mild oxidation by oxidizing agents. Primary alcohols can be oxidized by a number of oxidizing agents as we've seen, and this occurs in two stages. The thing to note is that in the first stage, let's take ethanol as an example, hydrogen atoms are lost. And in the second stage, an oxygen is gained. So we can often think as oxidation as a decrease in the number of hydrogens or an increase in the number of oxygens. Rather than concentrating on electrons, we can look at the oxygen to hydrogen ratio to help us see if oxidation or reduction is occurring. So if we look at ethanol, our ratio of hydrogens to oxygens is one to six. We've got one oxygen and six hydrogens in an ethanol molecule. So our oxygen to hydrogen ratio is one to six. Ethanol can be oxidized to ethanol. If we count the number of oxygens, it's one, and the amount of hydrogens is four. So our oxygen to hydrogen ratio has increased to one to four. And if we oxidize ethanol further to ethanoic acid, we've got two oxygens and four hydrogens. So our oxygen hydrogen ratio is two to four, or it could be simplified from one to two. So you can see that this oxygen to hydrogen ratio has increased as oxidation occurs. So we can say that oxidation is an increase in the oxygen to hydrogen ratio. And the opposite is true as well. If we go the other way, which is a reduction reaction, reduction is a decrease in the oxygen to hydrogen ratio. So this is a summary of what we've covered so far. Oxygen is an increase in the oxygen to hydrogen ratio, and the reverse is true for reduction. Copper 2 oxide or acidified dichromate can be used to oxidize primary alcohols to aldehydes and then to carboxylic acids, and secondary alcohols to ketones. You also need to know the visual changes in these reactions. So during these reactions, black copper 2 oxide forms a brown solid, and orange dichromate solution turns green. Tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized using these oxidizing agents. As we saw earlier, aldehydes, but not ketones, can be oxidized to carboxylic acids. Oxidizing agents can be used, therefore, to differentiate between an aldehyde and a ketone. There are three types of reagents and reactions you need to know which we'll come across. So to summarize, propanal, an aldehyde, will be oxidized to propanoic acid, which is a carboxylic acid. However, if we take a ketone, such as propanone, that will not be oxidized further by mild oxidizing agents. So it's not readily oxidized. We say it resists mild oxidation. This is an experiment in which I've added an aldehyde, ethanol, to a test tube labeled A, and propanone, a ketone, to a test tube which is labeled K. To that, I'm adding a few drops of acidified dichromate. And then the reaction is warmed using hot water from a kettle. You can see a color change has occurred in the test tube of the aldehyde, showing that it's been oxidized to a carboxylic acid, while the one with the ketone has resisted further mild oxidation. We can say that orange acidified dichromate solution turns green when warmed with an aldehyde, but not a ketone. So what's happening is the aldehyde is being oxidized, is losing electrons. Those are gained by the orange dichromate ions in the presence of hydrogen ions to form the green chromium ions that are seen as a positive test in this reaction. In this experiment, a solution called feeling solution is added to each test tube. Feeling solution is blue due to the presence of copper two positive ions. In the tube marked K, I'm going to add a ketone, which is propanone. And in the tube with marked A, I'm going to add some glucose solution. Glucose is an example of an aldehyde. So after mixing, the solutions need to be warmed 
using water from a kettle. So the footage is going to be speeded up and you can see that a change has occurred in the tube with the aldehyde and feeling solution. The colour change is going from blue to brick red. And um, you can see the solution isn't, isn't clear. We're having a brick red solid or precipitate being formed in the tube with the aldehyde as it's been oxidised by the feeling solution, while the ketone does not form a brick red precipitate because ketones resist further mild oxidation. As you saw in the video, blue feeling solution forms a brick red precipitate when warmed with an aldehyde, but not a ketone. What's happening is that the blue feeling solution oxidizes the aldehyde, causing it to lose electrons. Those electrons are gained by the copper two positive ions. In this case, copper two positive ions gain an electron to form copper one positive ions. What's formed in the tube with the red precipitate is copper one oxide which forms an insoluble red precipitate or solid. This is my favourite reaction involving the oxidation of an aldehyde. It involves clear, colourless Tollens reagent, which contains silver nitrate, sodium hydroxide and ammonia. But the main thing to note is that it contains silver nitrate, which means it contains silver ions. To the Tollens reagent is added a few drops of aldehyde, in this case I'm using glucose solution. So I'm going to give it a little mix and then the reaction is warmed using hot water from a kettle. I want you to look at the test tube closely because you can see that after a few seconds a solid starts to appear at the top of the liquid. That solid starts to become shiny and become a silver mirror. And this is the positive test for Tollens reagent during an oxidation reaction. We see a silver mirror start to appear. I like this oxidation reaction so much, I'm gonna show you it again using a, a slightly larger scale, using a round bottom flask. So the tollens and the glucose has been added. As I swirl it around, you can see the solution goes from a clear colorless solution to a shiny silver mirror that can be seen in the round bottom flask. And this is, was used as a technique in the past to create silver mirrors on glass. So you should be able to see the reflection in the bottom of the flask. So as you saw in the videos, clear colourless Tollens reagent forms a silver mirror when warm with an aldehyde, but not a ketone. And what's happening is that because the aldehyde can be oxidised and lose electrons, these can be gained by silver ions to form silver atoms, which form as a silver mirror on the glass of the test tube or the round bottom flask. This is a diagram showing what happens to the glucose during its reaction with Tollens reagent. So the glucose has an aldehyde group, so it can be classed as an aldehyde. During the oxidation of glucose, the aldehyde group becomes a carboxylic acid group. So we can see that glucose can be oxidized to the carboxylic acid gluconic acid. Here is a past paper question I wanted to try, so pause it and see if you can get the correct answer. So if it's going to react with bromine solution, it needs to have a carbon to carbon double bond to decolorize it. And we see that here. So that means that bromine will form an addition reaction across this double bond, so it will decolorize bromine solution. Uh, will it react with acidified dichromate solution? Well, if we look at this functional group here, we've got a ketone being formed. We've got a carbonyl group flanked either side by two carbons. Remember, ketones resist further mild oxidation, so we will get no reaction. So our correct answer for this is D. Here's another question for you to try, so pause the video and attempt it, please. So the first thing to do is draw the full structural formula of 4-methylpentan-2-ol, as shown here. And then draw the product of the oxidation reaction, which forms this ketone. Now the thing to note 
is during this reaction we're losing two hydrogen atoms to form this ketone. So two hydrogen atoms are lost. So this means that if one mole of this weighed 102 grams, we would lose two hydrogen atoms and one mole of the product would weigh 100 grams. So we're losing two grams per mole of the alcohol. So our correct answer for this is A. Have a go at this one and pause the video. So how do we tell if something is a reduction? Well, it's basically the reverse of oxidation. So let's look at the A. A is methanol going to methanoic acid. So that's a primary alcohol being oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So that's an oxidation. B is propanal, an aldehyde, and our product is a carboxylic acid. So we're going from aldehyde to carboxylic acid. That's an oxidation. For C, however, we're going from a ketone to a secondary alcohol. That's almost the reverse of oxidation. So that's going to be a reduction reaction. And you can see with D, propantool is a secondary alcohol going to a ketone, which is an oxidation reaction. So our correct answer for this is C. This is the last question, so pause the video and attempt it, please. So when you heat an aldehyde with Tollens reagent, you get a silver mirror or silver precipitate. Silver in its own is acceptable. I've included this question because you need to know the colour changes associated with oxidation reactions covered in this video. So you'll need to know that acidified dichromate goes from orange to green, feeling solution goes from blue to brick red precipitate, black copper oxide will change to brown solid, and also Tollens reagent is a clear colour solution which changes to a silver mirror. So this is a summary of the learning outcomes in this video. So make sure you know the definition of oxidation in terms of oxygen to hydrogen ratio. Make sure you know the types of oxidising agents you can get and the colour changes associated and what types of compounds can be oxidised and which ones cannot. So I hope you find this video useful.